Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content, and I'm delighted to say that joining me on the program today are Christina Rodriguez, who is VP of the Network and Edge Group and General Manager of the Wireless Access Network Division at Intel, and Alexander Quash, who is VP and General Manager of the Wireline and Core Network Division at Intel. Hello, both of you. It's really good to see you again. Now, we're going to be discussing how telcos can reduce power and be more energy efficient. So, Christina, can I start by first asking you, how can the telco industry take the lead and use technology to reduce energy consumption? Well, that is that is a very good thing to do, taking into account that the telecom industry consumes a staggering amount of the total energy or total global energy, two, three percent. So it's important that we take the, the leadership here in building sustainable solutions. And as an industry, as an industry, we need to implement what exists today already, what we have already in our hands. And, and notice that I say implement because there is technology available, technology that we as Intel were playing a role in, uh, in, in that, uh, that those uh, uh, sustainable uh, so solutions, and we need to be implemented. For example, advanced silicon power management is one telemetry and power technologies enabling dynamic power management intelligent solutions through artificial intelligence and machine learning that will improve the, the, the energy consumption. And last but not least, the collaboration in the industry. This is a work that we need to do together as an industry. Thanks, Christina. So there's a lot we can do. Alex, turning to you now, what is Intel doing to understand the key operator KPIs in this space and where are you focusing? You know, operators are uh, really concerned about performance. So if you just kind of step back, uh, even a decade ago, when we initially started uh, the movement towards uh, NFV, when operators moved from proprietary integrated hardware software platforms into common off the shelf, you know, telco grade servers running software applications, telcos really wanted to have the absolute best uh, performance coming out of the, their platforms. And so Intel in that context has had the opportunity and we're very unique in this, uh, in this uh, capability to partner with the service providers to really get, make sure that they get the most out of our platforms. And you know, to do that, we have an internal uh, stack. We have internal stacks running across different workloads. Uh, we don't use synthetic benchmarks, right? We, we really look at real world applications, whether it's in the RAN or in the core, um, to reflect the performance optimizations that can happen on, on these uh, server platforms that are based on, on, on Intel CPUs. And so generation on generation, we partner with service providers to show them the art of the possible on Intel platforms. We do optimizations to take advantage of what Christina talked about, um, you know, capabilities inside the hardware, uh, whether they be accelerators or power efficiency, power management capabilities. Um, and then we show the industry what's possible. So for example, um, operators really are concerned about performance and generation and generation, you know, we show every year at Mobile Congress, for example, this past Mobile Congress, we showed uh, one terabit per second uh, capability on a 5G core UPF uh, running the fourth generation Xeon platform. Uh, and so, you know, in that context, um, operators are really concerned about performance as foundational. Uh, and as you, as you both, you know, talked a little bit about now, uh, power efficiency is, is absolutely critical. Um, and without sacrificing performance with the increase in performance, uh, operators are really concerned about getting power efficient networks and so reducing the power consumption while they're increasing performance and not giving up any of the other telco uh, key performance indicators. Absolutely. And Christina, building on the shift to cloud native, what is Intel doing in the hardware space to make it easier for operators to work towards their sustainability goals? A lot of work and a lot of effort that we're putting into it. This is uh, very important for us. As you know, Guy Intel has a long history 
in virtualization and the cloudification of the network. And we also are investing heavily in our roadmap, specifically with the goal of be building more sustainable solutions. So I'll give you some examples. For example, in our roadmap, our fourth generation of Intel Xeon scalable processor can deliver up to twice the capacity within the same uh, a power envelope. So double, basically double the performance per watt, something that Alex was just talking about. In addition to that, we also have introduced, we have launched what, what we call VRAM Boost. VRAM Boost bring the acceleration into our CPU, it, it eliminating the need to have an external PCI card with uh, additional acceleration. And with that, we're talking about another 20% of uh, energy improvement or power consumption reduction. And then in addition to that, something that I'm very excited about it is capability, specific power management capabilities that our CPU, CPU has, namely the P state and the C state. These are capabilities that by being used, you can again manage dynamically your uh, power consumption. And then finally, our FlexRun software showing the ecosystem, bringing a reference to the ecosystem to use all these capabilities and to have the best possible software and uh, hardware solution with sustainability in mind. Thank you, Christina. And speaking of software, which you mentioned there, Alex, what do operators need to be thinking about from a software perspective? And what role do the ISVs play here? Uh, guys, software is, is so critical. And we talk about, uh, Christina just talked about innovations with, uh, with operators around um, our power efficiency solutions. One recent example, and this is an example of what Intel uh, can do with, uh, with operators, is uh, the work that we announced with uh, SK Telecom um, around power efficiency and around the, the ability to dynamically take advantage of the uh, P and C states that Christina was talking about to actually uh, decrease power consumption in their networks. So specifically, um, what, we, what we did with SK Telecom is uh, we looked at their commercial uh, traffic profiles and we matched that to the CPU power consumption uh, and so that we could dynamically tune the CPU power consumption by lowering the frequency states, um, the power states that, that uh, uh, help with uh, CPU uh, frequencies. Uh, that match the SKT uh, traffic profile so that when the traffic profiles were lower, um, today people aren't necessarily saving the power, but now if you can, if you can throttle down the, the frequencies, uh, you can actually save power and you don't give up any of the, the necessary uh, network KPIs in terms of uh, latency, jitter, et cetera, et cetera. And so in that context, um, we have now announced um, a, a new software uh, as a result of that collaboration called the Intel uh, Infrastructure uh, Power Manager uh, for 5G Core. And this works uh, across um, all the core workloads, starting with the, with the UPF, but extending into the control plane. And this software actually allows um, ISVs, you know, the likes of the, uh, the Ericsson's and the NEC's and the CASAs of the world to integrate um, this piece of software into their core application. These are commercial application vendors uh, so that they can take advantage of the capabilities that are en enabled in their hardware while maintaining all of the KPIs necessary for their customers, the service providers in their networks. Um, as a result of this, um, of this software, it's IPM, um, we've shown with SKT um, and uh, announcements from uh, Nokia, from NEC, uh, from CASA, um, and that we can save uh, anywhere from 30 to 55%, um, you know, power savings uh, from a CPU consumption perspective, translating that into, into servers. Uh, over a five year period, uh, if you take a, a look at a, a, a typical server deployment, if you will, just in the 5G core alone, uh, it's estimated that we can save about 400 um, gigawatt hour uh, of power, um, over 10 million, $12 million in, uh, in power consumption savings. 
as well as uh, close to 300,000 um, uh, metric tons of CO2 offset. Uh, and, and so this is a, a great capability that's available uh, in 2023, now, not in the future, uh, that's been delivered through the uh, software vendor. So software is absolutely key. That's what uh, is able to take advantage of underlying hardware capabilities. And we're working with operators and, and um, ISVs to make that happen. And those are sizable figures you mentioned there. Christina, what are some of the key dependencies in getting these capabilities that we've been talking about deployed into the telcos? This is the journey we are in already, right? I think, I, I truly believe, uh, Guy, that having the, the, the route that we have taken, the journey that we have taken into virtualization of the network and cloud or cloudification of the network is a key dependency in bringing this innovation and bringing all this, the software developers in the world to add innovation in different uh, uh, areas of that network, all looking at it holistically. Um, but, you know, so virtualization cloud native, super important, having the right uh, architecture, the right uh, uh, network, the, the right silicon underpinning that architecture. And, and certainly we believe that Intel architecture will play and is playing a key role there. And then the industry col collaboration. We have done already multiple POCs. Uh, uh, Alex was talking about the, the, the work that we have done already in the core. In the RAN, similar kind of things. And every POC get us closer. I, I believe we're at the moment where, okay, POC, we have demonstrated here, let's move to rolling this out in a, in a commercial way, industrializing this. But just to give you a few examples, I mentioned before about the 30% that we saw in, in, uh, in power energy uh, uh, a in power consumption reduction. This was a, pr a proof of concept with Deutsche Telekom, with DTAG, running their traffic. So excellent proof of concept in, in a 24 hours, 30% of uh, reduction. Later, more, more recently, we also did a proof of concept with Ericsson. And uh, again, both uh, the, the Deutsche Telekom and, and Ericsson were using the C state and we saw 20% reduction in the quiet periods and 10% in busy periods on the, on the network. So fantastic too. And then also recently we did a proof of concept with uh, Vodafone and a few key partners, Radices, Wind River, Keysight. And this was an end-to-end -end kind of uh, measurement. We saw 12% of uh, efficiency, power efficiency using PS state. So again, a lot of proof there. Uh, technology that exists, we need to start rolling this out and taking advantage of it. Thanks, Christina, which brings me to my final question to both of you. And Alex, let me put it to you first. You've obviously done a lot of work in this area, but what do operators need to do in the short term or, or right now to accelerate their power savings and sustainability goals? Well, you know, the, the great news is, you know, what Christina and I are talking to you about now, taking advantage of advanced power capabilities. These are all available uh, actually in previous generation and certainly uh, even better now in the fourth generation Intel Xeon processor, along with uh, software that I just talked to you about, whether it's, uh, you know, the Intel infrastructure power manager for 5G core or software capabilities in the, in the radio access network that Christina was talking about working with um, the ecosystem in that space, that solution doesn't need to wait. Uh, this is something service providers can take advantage of today. Uh, and so there are things that they can do and there are things that they should do. Uh, things that they can do involve you know, doing proof of concepts in their own labs to get comfortable with the technology. That technology is available today. Uh, and so get comfortable with it. And then more importantly, ask their commercial suppliers. So we don't, Intel as an underlying silicon supplier, we deliver software to enable the capabilities in our silicon. We don't necessarily guarantee the, uh, the network KPIs. We're not a commercial software vendor in that, in that sense uh, from a, you know, either radio access network perspective or from a core perspective. And so these service providers, uh, you know, please go, go talk to your, to your ISVs about these advanced um, power management capabilities in the silicon. They already come with the silicon that's being installed in servers in their networks, and they can just, 
just really, you know, work with the ISVs, flip the switch, get these capabilities so that they not only enjoy the increased, um, you know, just unprecedented power uh, leadership, but then also now power consumption and power efficiency and um, power uh, consumption reduction um, as part of those platforms. So that's, uh, that's, that's something I, I think that service providers should actually do like right away. Thank you, Alex. And Christina, what advice do you have for service providers? What can they do right now? Well, Alex covered it really well. So I'm just going to add, add very little here. What do, we, what, are, what do operators need to do and what do we all need to do? We need to act. We have the technology right now. We have the innovation right now. We don't need to wait any longer. Yes, it's going to get better. But what we have today is good enough to start acting. Let's get those Xeon scalable processors with uh, all the acceleration, including the VRAM boost in the RAM side. Let's get that power capability, power management capability that we're offering right now. Let's put it to work and uh, let's get the benefit right away. Quite right. We can't afford to wait and we've got tools there. We should we should get on with it right now. Well, we must leave it there. Christina and Alex, it's very good talking with both of you. And thank you so much for joining us on the program today. Thank you. Thank you, Dan.